Most Christians present the Bible as one single inspired book written by the Holy Spirit, free from all errors and contradictions. These believe that the canon of Scripture has been closed, and often claims it contains everything that God wants us to know. Since the Bible is such an important book for their faith, one would think that all Christians agree on its content. Although this idea may seem reasonable, we find that it just isn't the case. This is the first video in a multi-part series about the canon of Scripture. In this video, we will focus solely on the books of the Old Testament canon. When comparing the Old Testament canons of different Christian groups, we find a glaring difference in what is accepted as the inspired Word of God. For example, the Protestant Old Testament canon contains 39 books, the Roman Catholic canon contains 46 books, the Ethiopian Orthodox canon also contains 46 books, although different from the Roman Catholic's 46 books, and the Eastern Orthodox canon contains 49 books. And if you thought those were enough differences, the Slavonic, the Syrian, and the Armenian canons also have differing content from the aforementioned. If the Bible collectively contains the words of God, why are there disagreements as to which book should be included as part of the Old Testament canon? At most, only one group can be correct. So if the Bible is the inspired word of God, who has the correct canon and how can we know for sure? Any discussion regarding the Old Testament canon must begin with the Septuagint. The Septuagint is the Koine Greek version of the Hebrew Bible. It is believed to have been translated between the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE. The Septuagint was created because many of the Jews that were spread throughout the empire were beginning to lose their Hebrew language. According to an ancient document called the Letter of Aristias, 72 Jewish scholars were commissioned to translate the Hebrew Bible into Greek. The term Septuagint means 70 in Latin, a tribute to the number of translators. Legend says that the books were independently translated by these 72 scholars and each arrived at the same identical word-for-word -word translation. The Septuagint contains the standard 39 books of the Jewish canon, also known as the Masoretic Text, plus other material including three stories added to the book of Daniel, the Song of the Three Young Men, Susanna, and Bell and the Dragon, additions to the book of Esther, 1st and 2nd Estrus, Tobit, Judith, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Maccabees, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch, Prayer of Manasseh, Letter of Jeremiah, Psalms of Solomon, in Psalm 151. In the 4th century, a biblical scholar named Jerome coined the term Apocrypha to refer to these additional books. Some argue that all of the books of the Septuagint should be canonized. The reasons given include the following. First of all, the New Testament quotes the Septuagint more than the Masoretic text. A majority of the Old Testament scriptures cited in the New Testament are quoted directly from the Septuagint. Mark 7, 6-7 shows Jesus quoting from the Septuagint, and Matthew 1, quotes the Septuagint version of Isaiah 7, 14. The Septuagint says that a virgin will be a child. However, the Masoretic text says that it was a woman, the Hebrew word Alma. Secondly, New Testament writers relied on themes of apocryphal books. Several scholars believe Hebrews 11.35 is a direct reference to 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Paul appears to have been influenced by the Book of Wisdom, and James shows his familiarity with the Book of Ecclesiasticus. Third, the early church accepted the Apocrypha as canonical. In his epistle written before the end of the first century, Pope Clement makes use of Ecclesiasticus and Wisdom, gives an analysis of the Book of Judith, and quotes from the additional sections of the Book of Esther. In the 3rd century, Origen quoted Baruch, Ecclesiasticus, and Judith in his homilies on Jeremiah, quoted Tobit in his commentary on Romans, quoted 2nd Maccabees and Wisdom in De Principis, and called Susanna one of the divine books in his homily on Leviticus. In Book 2 of On Christian Doctrine, Augustine said that Tobit, Judith, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Wisdom, and Ecclesiasticus were part of the whole canon of Scripture. In the 4th century, the Council of Rome approved Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Tobit, Judith, and 1st and 2nd Maccabees to be included in the canon. In the 5th century, the 4th Council of Carthage also approved the same books. In the 8th century, 
The Second Council of Nicaea approved everything that was said at the Fourth Council of Carthage. In the 16th century, the Council at Trent approved Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Tobit, Judith, First and Second Maccabees, and Baruch to be included in the canon. The final reason why some believe all of the books of the Septuagint should be canonized is because the Dead Sea Scrolls included four apocryphal books that were written in Hebrew. Those books were Tobit, Ecclesiasticus, the Letter of Jeremiah, and Psalm 151. When Martin Luther translated the entire Bible into German, he started the convention of placing the Apocrypha in a separate section apart from the Old Testament and New Testament. Luther felt that the Apocrypha could be used as a worship resource for faith and morals, but as far as doctrine is concerned, to corroborate it but not to formulate it. He did not consider it to be inspired. Today, the Apocrypha does not appear in the Protestant Bible. Although it appears as if there should be agreement on which books constitute the Old Testament canon, this isn't the case. The Protestant Bible rejects the entire Apocrypha as uninspired. The Roman Catholic Bible accepts the following sections of the Apocrypha as inspired Tobit, Judith, First and Second Maccabees, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch, Additions to Esther, and Additions to Daniel. The Eastern Orthodox Bible contains all of the Apocrypha accepted by the Roman Catholics plus 3 Maccabees, 1st Esdras, the Prayer of Manasseh, and Psalm 151. The Slavonic Bible contains all of the Apocrypha accepted by the Eastern Orthodox plus 2nd Esdras. The Georgian Canon accepts all of the Apocrypha contained in the Slavonic Bible plus 4 Maccabees. The Ethiopian Orthodox Canon accepts the following sections of the Apocrypha as inspired Tobit, Judith, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Maccabees, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch, Additions to Esther, Additions to Daniel, 1st and 2nd Esdras, Psalm 151, Jubilees, Enoch, and 4 Baruch. From now on, when a Christian tells you that the Bible contains the inspired words of God, ask him, which Bible?